welcome to tonight's episode of Beyond Focus TV. I'm your host, Lydia Patel. And as always, I have a very special guest for you, entrepreneurial specialist and author, Michelle McClymont. She's in the house tonight for the next 30 minutes, so stay with us. You're watching Beyond Focus Beyond TV. Beyond Focus TV allows you to discuss contemporary topics affecting the Caribbean people on both the national and local level. The show features informed guests who offer insight, debate, and evaluate various issues. Beyond Focus TV builds on the station's mission to provide useful information to the Caribbean people in New York and abroad. Beyond Focus TV, where our viewing audience can get educated, informed, and empowered. Welcome back. You're watching Beyond Focus TV. I'm Lydia Patel, sitting here with entrepreneurial specialist and author Michelle McClymon. She's no stranger here to Beyond Focus. Welcome back, Michelle. Thank you, Lydia. Thank you for having me. Well, it's great to have you. A couple years ago, we had you in a different role, actually. Yes, yes. Uh, you were working for the Notion Avenue bid. Mm -hmm. A lot of great things. You actually helped develop a lot of the businesses that are currently there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and then move on to, mm -hmm. to bigger and better projects. Um, and that's why I call you an entrepreneurial specialist, because yes. that's kind of what you do. You come in, develop, set them off into the world Yes, <laughs> to kind of be free. And that, that must be nice for you. Um, we'll talk about a little bit how you got to this point. But okay. How do you feel when you actually start up a business? Because I know you do a lot of startups, um, helping people even get grants and funding and people who may not even know how to get started. Mm -hmm. And then you set them up. And like I said, you kind of, all right. Let, let your wings go now. How do you feel when you kind of walk down the street and be like, I help them, I help them? Well, it's a great feeling, and it really is fulfilling. I, I call myself almost like um, a dream maker. Right? Mm -hmm. Because you, when someone comes to you with an idea, sometimes we're quick to say, oh, that doesn't sound like it's going to work. But there's so many successful businesses that people say, oh, that's silly. That didn't sound like it was going to work. And look how much money they're making and how successful they are today. Mm -hmm. So I'm always a person to say I won't turn anyone away. Let's kind of like flush out your idea and see how it can come to a true vision for you. So it's always fulfilling to see people really living out what their dream is. And that's amazing. Um, so let's talk a little bit about how this all got started for you. Let's talk about Michelle before you had the business aspect. How, what, what led to this point to where we are today? Um, I think, so working overall with the Department of Small Business Services and understanding the free services that are out there for small businesses, I really fell in love with the fact that New York City was offering services to small businesses. One of the things I realized is that our community don't really take um, advantage of free services for many reasons. You know, sometimes oh, they can't even, they're afraid to leave. It, it's, you know, almost like Catch-22. You don't have your business really set up, so you feel like you can't leave to even go take a course or to sit with someone to see how to grow. So therefore, it's about meeting people where they're at. And working with this city, I was able to encounter all of these um, resources and all of these skills and build on my skills. And I realized that there is, you know, just a disconnect between some of the services and individuals. And what happens is when you go into the city for a free service, mm -hmm. yes, you may be helped. However, who follows up with you? Who says, hey, you came in last week. Did you ever go to that website I sent you to? Did you ever follow through? Did you make that phone call? No one does that. So me stepping out and starting my own business, it's more of being able to follow up with individuals and helping them to get to that next level. So that's why, you know, I just saw that need right there. And many times you call people back and do that follow-up, and they're like, oh, thank God you called me. No, I didn't do so-and-so, or this happened and that happened. Mm -hmm. So it's really putting people on the right track. But it's interesting because a lot of times the city does offer these services. Yes. And you would hear comments in the community, oh, but there's no help, there's right. no this. Again, kind of like Catch-22, because part of me feels like it's maybe not promoted enough to reach all of the communities Absolutely. because if so many of us feel and and you could take even Brooklyn it may reach Brooklyn does it reach all of Brooklyn does right. it reach Bed-Stuy Flatbush right. and certain more or what used to be more because you can't even say mm -hmm. disadvantaged areas right. anymore right but you know what typically used to be more exactly. lower income disadvantaged exactly. parts of Brooklyn yes but the services yeah. Fort Greene would be the furthest it will go right downtown Brooklyn right 
Right. It's but, not reaching yeah, East New York. It's not reaching those areas where it's really needed. And a lot of times our communities, we get our original funding from different places. From you know, We have cultural things that we do. Those who know about partners and susus. Susu, and things like, oh my goodness. <laughs> you know? And because it's, it's not a typical way of doing things, but if that's how we know how to grow our businesses, we sometimes shy away from letting the city know and not understanding it's not really important where you got your money from because every culture has their own little way of making money. But we need to make sure we take advantage of services that are out there. And that's one of the things I do, too, is connect people with services as far as, do you know that the city does this? Do you know the city does that? And connect them with services that I don't provide. Oh, my goodness. Well, that's definitely something at the end of the show. We'll have all the information. So if you can assist with that, getting placements, everyone, of course, funding, the issue of funding is always a hot topic. Absolutely. Um, There's different grants. There's different things you qualify for. Um, They just being pointed in the right direction. Yes. Because it could be very overbearing. Oh, yeah. Even for someone who is fluent in English, Mm -hmm. it could be overbearing. Mm -hmm. So let alone someone who's a lot of our viewers are their first language Creole. Right. So there's a language barrier. Yes. Yeah. And then sometimes people feel oh, I need to get money from the bank. And the bank is going to turn you down, and you figure um, it's a lost cause. But there are alternative funding. There are a lot of alternative lending out there that individuals are not aware of. That's great. And where could they get more information on this? Um, Is it typically just the New York City website? Um, I can help. Well, Michelle can help. <laughs> that's that's always a good That's, a, that's always a good that's alternative. That's what Perfect. I do. But um, I can tell people to Google alternative lending, um, crowdfunding. Just Google some of these ways of how can I get just, hey, I'm a Google queen. So I just put in what you're thinking. How do I get additional funding for my business? And see what comes up, see what conversations come up and what blogs come up and how what it can lead to. Absolutely. That's really, really amazing. So then, of course, you know, fast forward after you're sitting with the bid, you've done a couple of things. And I have to say, fantastic job because the Thank junction, you. the junction was <laughs> a little bit interesting. Definitely not with BBQs there and a lot of more up and coming businesses. Yes. It yes. definitely took the level up a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. So kudos to that Thank because you. a lot of people who, if you know the junction, if you, the, Brooklyn, Brooklyn College, two and five train. Mm-hmm. It kind of was just a transportation hub mm-hmm. and nothing mm-hmm. more. Mm-hmm. And there's still a lot of work left to be done. Still a lot of work left to be done because you definitely want different businesses and, and um, still helping the small businesses to thrive also. And when you're working with something like a team, like the bid, how do mm-hmm. you decide? Is there like a limit on, okay, we have this amount of restaurants, this amount of types of businesses? Like, of course, you're not going to have a strip of just 15 restaurants right. and competing against each other. How are those kind of decided? Well, that's a great question because um, you may want to have a, a, a street that has 15 restaurants, but you may want to have different restaurants because, for instance, in, in the restaurant world, you may not want to be that one restaurant on that block. Because if someone doesn't want to come to you that night, they're not coming to you. As opposed to, think of Times Square. And think of if you have someone coming to town that's never been in New York, and the first thing you think of, oh, let me take it to Times Square. Mm-hmm. Be- I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't have a plan for Times Square. But I know when I get to Times Square, we're going to get something to eat. I don't know if we're going to eat Italian or we're going to eat Caribbean. I don't know what we're going to do. But there are many choices in Times Square. So that's the kind of analogy as having one restaurant on one block. If I don't want to eat at that restaurant, I'm not going to that block. But if I know, hey, you know what, I want to go out and eat. There's five choices on that block. Let me just go see what's happening, you know, in this area. So you may want that restaurant row type of thing. That that actually works for Mm -hmm. you. Well, hold that thought. We'll take a quick break. We'll be right back. You're watching Beyond Focus TV.
welcome back. You're watching Beyond Focus TV. I'm Lydia Patel sitting here with Michelle McClymont. So Michelle, tell us a little bit before we ended off the segment we're talking about how things are kind of zoned out, how mm -hmm. these choices are made. And a lot of times when I speak to different people who may be thinking of a business, everyone kind of analyzes what's already on the block, what's already right. on the look, because it's all about the location and setting that up. But you brought up a very good point. Just mm -hmm. because there's other restaurants on there doesn't mean you can't be another restaurant right there. exactly it, it definitely can mean that you're another restaurant or what individuals need to understand is they need to look at the demographics of the area they need to look at where people are spending their money so if someone's spending their money um, I would say beauty salons or someplace else or doing mm -hmm. something outside of the neighborhood that's something you want to bring to the neighborhood try to stay away from what you in yourself would want right so a lot of people say well I don't like that jerk chicken so I'm gonna open my own jerk chicken because I don't like that jerk chicken but you're not the customer right <laughs> you're not gonna be the customer every single day or you and your friends are not gonna be the customer every single day so what does the neighborhood need where are people going and spending their money why are they leaving the neighborhood is there not somewhere to hang out after 10 is there not a happy hour is there not something that's letting people stay in that neighborhood, maybe that's what you want to bring wherever you know the money's being spent. And that's an interesting point. A friend of mine, um, she had this idea for a restaurant mm -hmm. and she was trying to map out the menu and she put all her favorite foods on it. <laughs> and I was like, okay, these are very specific things that you like. Right. But if you make it too specific, right. especially like the Caribbean so vast, Trinidad's already mixed because you can go more on the East Indian side, you can go more on the black side exactly. in terms of the food. But if you make it too much one way, it's not going to appeal. To, you're kind of excluding everybody exactly. else, especially if you're trying to make it more universal for everybody to come right. in. Right, right. You kind of have to right. put your taste buds aside. Exactly, exactly, exactly. And sometimes you want you can go simple, right? When you look at the the little shops that make um in, when you go in the city there's a shop that does french fries only there's places that do mac and cheese only I that, wondering, right? how do you survive, how do you survive? You exactly fries. exactly but if it's a great product people are going to come and if One you know how to, the menu if you fries. know how to mar exactly if you know how to market it and you know how um you know you have a following you know how to market it you're going to get clients it's all in the marketing Absolutely. It really is. Absolutely. So let's talk about these workshops that you do because you offer, Michelle offers a great workshop for actually a lot of small businesses um, right here in Brooklyn. She has a ton of people who she's actually helped out mm -hmm. um, who've taken like a, I want to call them like a mini seminar. Right. Basically, mm -hmm. you come out and it's a couple of businesses together mm -hmm. who kind of train and coach with each other. Right. Um, and it's really great. Why don't you elaborate on that? Okay, so I decided to do these workshops for individuals to do to get business plans together, or to just because I have courses where you can do a business plan, or you can just hear a one day, you know, two hour seminar about how to get started, how to get license and permits, location, everything we just mm -hmm. kind of talked about. But the the gist to it is, um, it's basically it's called you know a new kind of classroom because what I do is I try to hold it in spaces that are not your typical classroom. So I hold it in restaurants mm -hmm. where it's, you know, win-win for us both. So if it's a restaurant that has a very slow night and I say, you know what, I'm going to hold a class here, is that okay? And they're fine with it. People come in, they may um, take part in happy hour, they may order dinner, they may have drinks or whatever. We have a class and, you know, people tend to stay over and after class and maybe do takeout or have a meal Excellent and contact. that actually helps the restaurant I actually um, will do and it doesn't have to be a restaurant it can be anywhere it can be a bakery it can be anywhere that has space and we can collaborate and say okay when people come here they'll get to know you it's a marketing another marketing tool for the business and um, but you don't feel like you're being sold right you, you, you're not you're not which is you, great you know and, and it's a it's great so concept organic. It's, people love it it's a great concept you it's you're learning and you get to meet other individuals and that's why I like to do the workshop especially business plan workshops because it takes it kind of takes me as the instructor